Okay, everyone. The last one for the whole conference. Brave guys, thank you for coming here. So, what we are supposed to talk about? S bombs. Everyone talks about S bombs there. So, I'm not talking about S bombs. No, no joking. This is a nod for theirs. But I will talk kindly about S bombs, but nothing about what you're listening there. So, what we actually we have in the components included in S bombs? This is mostly related to data. But then, see, where I come. So I'm um, software technologies lead at Cariad. Cariad is a small software company in the middle of the whole software group from Volkswagen. We just run four companies, auto, automotive companies. They are just a small thing. And co-chair of the open chain uh, specification group. So the next security specification on open chain is coming from us. I've been OS lead OS domain in BMW before, the latest before the move into Cariad Volkswagen there, and I'm core maintainer for SW360 and long time KDE developer. Long time is more than 22 years, but yeah, I'm old. Basically, we're talking about the agenda. That's several topics about telling there are things that are getting more complex. If you have a bomb, understand the formats. Determine. This is mostly everyone talk about that. If you go in any talk related this in this conference, someone talk part of this. So we are going just relate some things about relating this ones. There we go for the first thing. Things got more complex. There, it's everything is reused like Lego. Why you say that? So this is one thing that everyone get wrong mostly in this confidence there. S-bombs is nothing to do about a product that you release, you're creating this, and this has become a magic. No, it's not. s bomb is just a final contract of the whole process of gathering data, processing data, getting everything agglutinated, and you get the result there. S-bombs could be anything. We are using S-bombs since ever. Before it's called it S-bombs. We always have the definitions, the specifications for something we are as resulting. So you are just creating now a name and making this a product that actually is not. Because if you produce bad data, doesn't matter what you call it, that's bombs, it worth nothing. And then 10 times more complex than a few years ago. That's true and untrue because all this complexity exists in forever. It's always existed. The difference is that we didn't have these things formed. We never saw these complex things. We still have millions of codes of data, of lines of codes of applications in the past there. And why is so different from today? Today is because we have package managers. We can have modules. We can separate these things. There. So the complexity is visible right now. It's not because it's more complex. That's the thing. And then when you discover that it's visible, it becomes more complex to us. That's the thing. So then. We got complex stacks with multiple technologies and languages. Yeah, okay, matter, yeah. So we, before we have one or two languages, right? No, we always had this once. But now every, it's easy to everyone create a new language, new stack, all the things, and hide the things. Okay, let's, let's use the same thing that everyone did in the past. Ken Thompson, no, yes, people did it. Oh, left pad, oh, people already talked at this conference there. Okay, let's not talk about that. But there we go. Everyone talks about the same things there's in the conference there. So then you have deep dependency trees. It's exactly what you have in the past there. And bugs are, and vulnerabilities, yes. So 20 years ago, all the software was perfect. 30 years ago, all the software was perfect. We just now we have having problem vulnerabilities. Yeah, we didn't have internet. But the hackers, it comes, comes before the internet. So we can even have a... a Possibilities that histories of hacks that using hard drive chips to actually make a persistent hacking. The one that people think, oh, Heartbleed, this is pretty new. You can put in everything on the BIOS directly and, and pass, uh, pass the, directly the chipset. No, it is existing for a long time ago. It's nothing new. It's just because we are seeing it now. And then complex software supply chains across actors. Yeah, this has never existed before. Let's imagine that, oh, okay, sometimes let's go to Nokia, that's SDKs for Nokia, Android SDKs 1.0 there. It's way beyond like 
20 years ago there. Yeah, so there you go. This is very new. No, it's not. So there you, you can see right now, basic on these things there, that really is nothing new. And S bombs itself is just a declaration that what is having a long, long time and is starting to see things. Magically, because why? Because we are having a faster intelligence in processing things. We have a very understanding knowledge about how you are doing things, even these complex pipelines that we're going with things like GitHub or GitLab, that we have actions, pipelines. We, we have a very advanced, and that's the case. And let's say the, the very bad word for today, AI, okay? So now you have AI that's solved everything of the things. No, it's not, but we are just again there. So S bombs to the rescue. This is that's exactly this is the thing. So so you got an S bomb. That's easy. Let's see exactly like this. this. What is wrote in here? All the tools there's a capacity to create some S bombs nowadays. Pay attention now exactly what they say. All the tools have some capacity to create S bombs. There's. Do the tools do exactly the same thing? Did someone answer me? No, of course not. So if anyone here in this conference or any sitter say, says to you that my tool uh, provides the best S bomb ever. So what actually he's saying? Why you're buying this thing? Because it only provides what the tool provides to you. So let's speak in the famous open source area there. We have tools that do software catalog. We have tools that do scanning. We have tools that do software editage. We have tools that actually look for vulnerabilities. Do the tools do the same thing? No, it's a completely different things. Do actually the S bones generating for these tools are wrong? No, they are. They are complete? No. So your application can produce S bones? Yes, perfect there. But your application produces everything. No, it not happen to anyone. If someone says to you that we provide the perfect test bomb for your company, they are lying, a pure lie in that. No one can do that. Even us that work in an open source understand that one and you say that we are not there. If you try to do everything, something will do it wrong and never do it right. So this is one thing that is important to understand there. Yeah. So what's next? We have validations for formats, check the content identifiers. This is obvious things. We need to do it there's next. So then we then we come to a components list. Trust but verify. There we go. Then how verify that? Yeah? Origin license is exactly what we are doing today because it's what we have. And then today I list, I listen in about several talks on SBOMs and talk. Okay, blockchain. Fair enough. This is possible there. We've been there, done that. Steve talking about a long time. It's about Hyperledger, we tried it, was too early at the time. We are right on this time, but we are too early. And then people forgot about and then it's coming back again, like a new thing that nobody tried. So it was there, there's logic there. So applying policies on top, what's your policies? Your policies, which are the policies? This is people are talking a lot about this. This is one way to secure there. Companies have different policies. It means that the resulting S bond that's valid to you is not the same resulting S bond that's valid to other ones. Tools doesn't extend and don't understand this part. Tools basically get the, get the resulting data for somewhere and do it. So it means that the policy needs to be before the S bomb and the policy comes from your company. So in the end, the S bomb generated is different from the other one for the company. It means that S bombs is just a contractual interface related to the data that comes before. How you produce the data that's important. The S bomb is exactly representation of what we have done well before, and proof to that. So, understanding the S bomb formats. Let's play the game now. What's the big fight today? Okay, we have Cyclone DX. No, but we want to produce SPDX. No, we want to produce whatever format there is. It's tiresome. This is someone uh, comment, Gary comment today, let's get again back to VHS to Betamax, s bomb version. No, no, this is exactly the things. If you think about, okay, do you really care about the format that goes there? unless they represent properly what you want to be represented. And where does the data come from the format? Do Cyclone DX make better data for me than SPDX? 
or they are actually the same data in a different way. That's basically the same data again. So it's something that I already wrote in my white paper that is completely stupid even for the point of view of us producing open source applications that we have several applications that do different things, are generating S bonds in some way from the same source code. Why you do have four different resulting things for the same source code? And that's exactly the point there. It's, the S bombs today is just a representation of information that we can generate again. And then this is not the same for everyone. So the question is how we can consolidate this information? So see, no S bomb creation tool could create the same S bomb from the same software. And that's exactly the truth. Doesn't matter if you pay millions for a company, doesn't matter if you go to the GitHub, download, compile your source coders. It's the same thing. Exactly the same thing. So there you go to the receiving end, expect significance, validation, S bond and format. The validation is nothing to do about S bond. The S bond can produce the contract of the data, but the validation comes for some way that companies or universities or entities actually will validate the data from there. We have some minimum information that you want from this bond, but this is logical. Companies demand more than the minimum information. So again, doesn't matter the format. If you're looking about there's people talking formats that's not about the specific there's, but go for formats, literally formats written there, like YAML, JSON, and tag value. And even I saw discussions in companies about with lawyers and technicians there at the same time discussing about that. Because the lawyer says, no, tag value is better because I can see better. And the technician says, no, we cannot use tag value because it's completely hard to do it technically. It's tiresome, really. This is the, it's the most illogical thing that we do. It. The s bone need to provide the information that comes from a single source. What do you want to see? Please pick the data properly and generate for you. But don't try to make from the generated data something. This is something that is wrong. Yeah. So there you go. Demands that as bond formats that works for you. OK. Did it work there? Oh, OK. JSON, EGAMO, RDF, XML, tag value, too many formats. And at some point, there are people who ask me that, uh, can we create something that uh, AI understand that? And make a binary format to make it faster? No, this doesn't make sense. So we need to minimize some of these things. We have too many formats. We know what we need, the information inside that is be correct. So for example, there are packages demand package URLs. Before, we don't have anything related there. And it was uh, what looks like really, really simple for, for the mind of a developer. We never had any way to identify origin of the package properly and becomes absurd in the terms that we have several types of package managers and languages, and we simply didn't have any way to actually access this. I cannot tell if the, uh, before that the package come from Maven or come from Sonatype or coming from Peep or other things was, was just the name of the something there I did identify. So this is was created by Philippe Amrdan from NextB. This package URL becomes a sum de facto things. Finally, we have a description of what you can see there. This is minimal information. This is actually something that it goes to this bomb and actually is valuable information right now. So this is saying, there you go. It's now the, like the origin of the CPA, CPAD. CPA is, yes, it was great for security or other parts, but was really old classification on the times that the, the, the situation, modern situation did exist. It's nothing wrong about the CPEs or software ID. It's just it was from the past. We, we grow up, we need something better there. So there, which components? So there we go, this is the concept about uh, packages and components. This is the, again the discussion about Cyclone DX and uh, SPDX. This is the same. It's a package a component there is exactly the same. And this is actually create a lot of confusion for everyone because the understanding of a component and package goes a little bit beyond than this concept there. So if you think about, let's go again for the main consumer for SBOMs. It's companies. This is not an open source guy that loves to work at home with, with S bombs and be happy at your home. No, this is something that goes to lawyers and persons inside companies. 
companies don't actually deal with components. Co companies do with projects. Projects contain some sub projects and components inside the projects. And this basically transient dependency is a part of their project. We, we today have minimal way to represent an s bonds the project itself. We can actually use it, for example, as external references, components for projects, and you can treat maybe the project as a package or component the project itself becomes. That's why, for example, the representation SPDX always has the, the document and from every document, there's one package that actually is the document itself. So it's pointer in itself. It's a very interesting decision to take this, but then it fails in a simple thing. We don't have an abnormal identification for the project itself. So how to do that? This is not solved yet. And this is exactly what happens at the point that the moment that people pass by exactly what they're doing now. This famous S-bombs everywhere and you create S-bombs. When they're starting to appear in the end parts, we will fail. And then we will need this. So the same way that you and package were well, we will end up with needed for kind, kind of uh, normal identification for projects or the treat about how to do it, or even separate these things in a very, very way that you can connect in external references this because projects talked about other projects inside the company. And then there we go, there's one single word that I didn't talk about on this ones. Let's say, what is leads inside the company? What is missing on this, this part? Can anyone guess? This is something that about the S bomb and the project itself. Connected to what is missing on the on everything. So it's just hard to guess because nobody noticed the traceability. We don't have it. We don't have traceability. We have traceability for the component. We have for the subcomponents. We don't have for the project. We don't have for your son the S bomb pointed for the software doesn't point for your internal internal requirements document. Doesn't point us. We can add it as external reference. Yes, for the 3.0, we will have this one, yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, okay, but it's, it's, it's not feel completely this time. So this is, a, we are still lacking the traceability. None of the tools, tools using today generate any kind of traceability for this. Even my project that is basically controlling projects with there is, is failing to that. So it's shame on me as well there. So there you go. So you can see that uh, this, uh, we need some days. And package URL is basically a single identifier for doing this kind of things. You can see that it's, it's an ingenious idea, but it's simple. And then you can adapt for other things. You can see that package now is represented in the way that you can see the origin, the package, the version, and you can add the extension that the variant, because what people usually don't know and never comment that the package itself, sometimes even the software is literally modified or compiled in a different way that actually is not the same software that you get in upstream. So the software that you're using inside your company and legally bounded sometimes, it's a little bit different because the way you compile it. Good example, OpenSSL. OpenSSL is not the same software released on China and released on the US you have exports control problem. So there we go. So uh, libraries, Java, PHP for everything for package URL. And this is exactly the way that is compared to this, to the, the below the CPEs and theirs. CPEs is really hard because it's very filled with things that people don't know about. What is this asterisk? People don't know about this. Everything is possible to extend the information in a way that no one's feel. No software properly feel this, the, the rest of information of this. And that's what you fail to get. So simplify is the good thing. We get the origin of the software itself. It's improved, it goes there, and you can add it, ex extend things and connect to the parts there. So how to trust and verify? This is complex. It's, it's not simple. We can we can get some uh, some, let's say, tips. We're looking for license that you can connect about every single legal association for there. You can actually looking for databases for vulnerability, 
That's a lot of databases for everyone. So they uh, technically they should send, say the same results, but it's bad or diff or or right. That's always complex to say. Let's say GitHub has the largest uh, information about open source software and vulnerabilities. Yes, but GitHub is 90% only. Is 90% is a big number? Yes, but we still have 10% of the entire internet that is not part of the GitHub security. So we need to come from the elsewhere. Where you get the elsewhere? Let's say to you, for example, the kernel information is not in the GitHub security. So we need to get information from more parts. So this is complete different parts that you get there. So we need to validate in on one or two or three or four different places. It's hard. So there, there we go. So if you're thinking that you're at the end, your SBOM is validated, it's because before you run a lot of tools to get the resulting data. That's just one simple thing that people think. This validation is not coming, put in a stamp, in a very German way, stamp on your file, and there you go, it's, your file is good. No, sorry, if your data is bad, your, S, your SBOM will be bad as well. So, with package URL, we get this possibly related information there. And dependency check, dependency track, and other parts, we can use this information as a standard for everyone. And then this is becoming standard. So it's, it's the beginning, it's a small thing, it's just a, a really small thing. Yes, it's a big small thing, but this is actually to represent that it's possible using very simple things to fill the gaps that we have today on this ones. So store the SBOMs. That's a complex. This is this question popped up in every SBOM talk in this conference. Every single one. And there you go. So let's say that you stored your S bomb. Say you have a very good way that you have your art factory, or you decided to use Git to actually have an FNS there. That's a single problem there. You are talking about the US bomb as the end document, is the resulting of your project there. And then somehow, and then one point of the, the of the whole process. Something happens, you need to change your software there, and you need to add a new dependency because you have whatever the problem that exists in your software. So the resulting SBOMs differs there. Oh, it's fine. We just generate another one there, and then put in a Git, put in Artifactory. But wait, your product is already being released. The SBOM is on the market. How actually you tell to the people that bought the product or using the SBOM was where you release it? To, oh, please come back to me and pick the new one because the one that you have is invalid. No, we can't because we don't even know where this uh, part by. We don't even know which lawyer office are using theirs. You don't know which third party pe person's doing something. You have now two versions or more of the valid information. What is, where is the truth of that? This is a problematic part of that. So we, we simply have software evolve. We change in things on the time. So the things is like, for example, Ocelot is trying to do this kind of way. You have a peer review it. This is the most simple way that we can find today to actually this. Peer review it uh, S bombs that we can actually keep for logical components. It's not, but then this is not solve exactly what we have for the, again, our main cost, customer, companies there, or even government in this case. How we guarantee that is, as, uh, you get the S-BOM properly there? So the idea is that the data before the S-BOM need to be exists, not the S-BOM be the final results. We need to have the data in somewhere at the point that you can collect everything. So when someone asks to you, I want to see the bill of materials of your software, it's not we have get the file directly, a text file or anything, but we generate dynamically from the data that you actually have properly curated there in some pool. So a very good data lake that has a single source of truth, you can provide dynamically the SBOM the way you want. And then you ask it, oh, but I want the format X or Y. It's the same source, same data lake. It's dynamically created. We can provide to everyone the format that you want. We don't need to fight anymore because I just store format this way. It's useless discussion. Provide data that provides dynamically these things. So this kind of projects, it works in the way. So beyond the bonds, that's the interesting thing because no one thinks about there. So 
this S-bomb data, let's say, how you use the S-bomb data? This is the first question there. What will you do with the S-bomb? This is, please answer me. What will you do with an S-bomb? Let's say I generated the best S-bomb ever, like companies are saying. What do you do with that? For what it serves to you? Can you answer to me? Yeah, you can mail it to all of the yeah, perfect, yeah, great. <laughs> Yes, you can monitor vulnerabilities, but it's a static file. It's not live. So if vulnerability appears for the component, you need to generate a new S bomb for your product. No, you don't want to generate an S bomb for each vulnerability. You basically put it into a system and you are looking out dynamically and monitoring. Your yes, if you have the version of software correct. Let's go. okay, there we go. You got exactly the point. This is the perfect uh, world, but companies are requesting to get the information of the vulnerability on the S bomb. And then it's completely bonkers. There you go. See, yeah. I will not, sorry, I will not discuss with the lawyers. This is, I just, I, is, it is something that you cannot do. So the thing is that the companies have different, uh, different ways to deal with resulting response. They want external references for things that actually will change it during the time. So there we go. That's a, see, something that is very difficult to get because it's becoming validated. But let's say, forget about, let's say that the SBOM is a perfect text file with perfect information and never will change it. Can you use it for anything else? People say, oh yes. So let's go to, you want to see things on your, the managers want to see everything on your screen, like, like in Excel, or the managers want to see things as a graph, as beautiful things there. So what do we actually we do? Create another tool to parsing SPDX or or Cyclone DX, read thousands of files, create models again to put in there on the graph or actually to convert everything to Excel. So again, the resulting uh, uh, S-bomb is becoming a problem in the end. If you're thinking about as a format to use for everything, is the final document. It's not supposed to become using a data format. It's not. So again, back into this, it's all about data. If you have the same data in a single, single, board, single part, you can actually do all these things without recreating tools. We can have one single generator of S-bombs that read from the data that don't need to be coded again and again and again in every single tool. We can actually have exactly point out the data live in a dashboard, changing in real time, without again reading text file, creating, creating a parser, putting a conversion there, See, it's tiresome, but we can do it in this way. So S-bombs is the contractual end document. It's the end of the end to end. When you reach that point, it's because the data comes perfect to get this. It's the one that you show to the people. But if you want to manipulate and using this data, the S-bomb is not the result. So S-bombs is something that is good because you store and then you can see from the desk. But if you need really completely access to the end-to-end, -end, you need those parts. So the credits of these things. So I changed it a little bit. Philippe Heide made some of the slides. I changed the part there. But the credits and the links are, are here, there. Kariad moved to me. And why are talking about this one series? Just to say, uh, it's, people are talking too much about S-bombs. Most of the people are not talking exactly about the, the whole things that they need about S-bombs. And we are creating uh, war formats right now that's com at that point is completely hard because uh, this format wars is really not what we want right now, is not needed. We need actually work in what provide good data. So you, if you want to, you're really, you're good as bomb, provide the tools that actually provide the data to do it, not provide the S-bomb. The S-bomb will be the very perfect specification made by SPDX or Cyclone DX or SIFT or whatever people decided to use. But then a, a good S-bomb is the one that provides for a good data. There you go. So that's exactly what I want to say. Questions? Yeah, go ahead, Kate. Who decides what's good? Who decides what to do it? No, what's good? Yeah, exactly. This is a good question, actually. 
it's the lawyers. It's always the lawyers, because in the end, it's the, it's the ones that actually do the clean view for the product. So this is, um, the, the, uh, you can actually provide a good amount of data and provide everything right, and you say that everything that is there, it's correct. Your supplier can come to you to the, with a view of materials that you put in there and say it's right. So in the end, you cannot tell that actually it's perfect or not, because we need to trust theirs. The trust chain is the problem. So in the end, we'll be the lawyers, because they, uh, they do the last verification there. And they, even they, will ask us about some details, and they try to trust us to say that this is correct, what you're saying. So this, so this is a simple thing. We cannot. Uh, so there's a group that's meeting every Thursday um, that is, I guess, would be very late in the evening for Europe, unfortunately. Yeah, you know. And what they're doing is they're basically trying to explore as a group what should be filled in for each field of the minimum elements. Not for these formats, but what the SBOM definition yeah. calls for for minimum elements. And we have various fields in that definition, like supplier that people can rat hole on for forever, and you're not addressing here. However, what is a pragmatic way to fill this field in? And I think that's the definitions we need to go to. So I'm agreeing with your premise. It's a data. Let's get it right. Let's get common agreement what the data is. And then it can go to whatever format. But we need to sort of understand what we think good is and build up consensus about good. Yeah, I don't think we've got a path for that yet, uh, other than this. Coming from SPDX, you know very well that even this is happening before when you create SPDX Lite. Okay. Because it's people thinking about the minimum thing inside there. So yeah, this is a very difficult uh, thing to, to say. But I think that the minimum, t uh, the minimum thing that appears on this once will be ruled by the guys from security part, the, like, say, like people from S OpenSSF. It's because they are, has the most urgent uh, matters of this, and they understand about which kind of information there's. Then after this once, it comes from minimal what lawyers ask about the product in okay. the end. So we're going from the CISOs now to the lawyers. Yeah. OK. Yeah, we were. We are but, just. But, but we, I think. But I think. Like I say, I think each of these definitions of the fields yeah. is ambiguous. Okay? That's correct. Yeah. So what we need to do is build up an industry consensus of this is the sort of thing you should put in it, and if you don't put that in, nah, maybe maybe won't understand what you're talking about. It, it, the, the, the major difficulty on this one is even that, for example, let's pick in the the, the big players. European Union on side and uh, American government on their side, and they have completely different uh, things about what is minimal needed there okay. in the discussion. And the point is there, so how we balance this kind of things? It's, it's difficult. So, oh, yeah. And so, I, learned, I learned this week that the FDA has a different set of minimum, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're not going even on the medical part, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So, any other questions? Yes, the people, people are sleeping today. Yes, let's, let's talk, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, good. It's not just me being <laughs> So I just wanted to go back, I, just following on the, the topic about the, uh, you know, SBOM uh, fields being ambiguous and that. I'll just say there are, I, I, from, you mentioned earlier the uh, doc fest that we have and all the documents are different. Even in fields that are extremely clearly and precisely defined, and I don't think anybody disagrees with that, they come out all different. And yep. what, I, what I mean is like the file name. You think file name, oh, that's the name of the file. Well, is it like dot slash, or is it, does it start at the root of the tarball that you're including, yeah. or does it start at the root of wherever I did the analysis? It's like four different S-bombs had four different uh, formats for the exact same file name, by the way, because it's from the exact same tarball, and the spec is extremely clear that it's dot slash relative to the tarball, but only one of the four follow the format. So it, it's not just the ambiguity of the fields, but it's getting the tools. And, and, and the, one, the point that I wanted to make is there is an online validator for SPDX 
Anybody who thinks they have a valid SPDX should run it and make sure it comes back and says, yes, it's a good, <laughs> you know, because I can't tell you how many uh, SPDX documents I get that won't pass that. Yeah, it's just it's just a small dog food part. Even you do in passing for the SPDX uh, test on uh, Java, maybe you fail the official SPDX in Python or vice versa. <laughs> so the same one that is official one is failing there. That's right. Yeah, I know, I know. We were just... I, I, I'm, I'm, go, I'm going there. So this, uh, we have the, this is already fun thing. The good part there is, an, uh, I'm, I'm a really developer. I'm not actually a guy for the specification things. Yeah. And then, for example, when the Ocelot project was there and was running by Osado, Osado is a legal entity more running by lawyers for open source there. They decided, of course, of tag value are being the one of the repository and only tag value. Can you imagine that in the right moment, every single developer start to cry and say, why are you using tag value? We cannot use in processing there. At least we come with uh, some kind of middleware that we created a code that every time a committed code inside Ocelot goes to tag value, automatically you generate all the other values for the SPDX. So then, then you have the five ones. But really, this is tiresome. It's, it's, it's just because we are developers, we could foresee this coming and it was fast to do it. But in this case, uh, this, you are right, you can have the validators for everything, but we can have it even two different test bombs that pass on tests with the same source. That's, if they have more than the minimal with the different data. See, it's the thing. But, okay. but do run the validator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is obvious. <laughs> no, it's obvious. Yeah, 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 but understand that this is supposed to be technicians. They should understand that this should validate it. Yeah. And that this is a completely whole story and completely whole different talk about how to educate people about this. Yeah, it's hard. It's a style. I, I, I doubt that anyone here doesn't have a time that need to teach people inside their company about how the things is working, about states there. We all need to do this in all the time. That just happens. Okay. Yeah. Couldn't we do something like, uh, you know, how back in the early days for HTML, you had the HTML validator and the CSS validator on the website. Put something like that. Or uh, make something like that, it's sort of a program, brand no, no, program the, like that? I, I can tell to you, that's, that's tools, for example, even the legals are using, uh, let's remember the name one, one tool called Brighter. It's basically a no-code tool that's very oriented to the legal ones that actually make things f easier. They create a tool that you can push there and teach to them how to actually validate some files. This could exactly, this could be done. But still, you are missing one important point in the middle. And people that doing that don't understand why they doing that or what are their parts. This is actually crucial. If you get something that you don't understand, pass that it validates, and they okay, everything is fine. It's a dangerous thing. So that's we we need some kind of education for this. Okay, I think no more questions. Thank you guys to survive until the last talk of the meeting. <laughs> Thank you.